Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I just wanted to show you the public server and exactly what you can expect from the server. So first of all, to search and find that server, all you really need to do is write Longshot in the search bar and you'll be able to find my server. It's called Longshot Official Server. And here you can see basically the scenario. We got red versus blue. You got the line over here, the, the border line, and you got multiple SAM sites. It's a lot of SAM sites and also ground objectives as well. And what I'm trying to show you guys is the server is alive without any players. Like there is AI escorting tankers and AWAC says you got jets taken off. You got ground objectives. Uh, you got actual fighting going on here at the ground objective location. From, for example, here at Kudada, you got, you see, artillery coming. The artillery is shooting at uh, enemy locations from both sides. You got troops in contact that are actively fighting each other, and it's up to you guys to get there and help them uh, to, to complete this objective. Other than the fact that the environment is already good to go for a fight, you got AWACS up in the air, tankers, you got a naval battle actually happening, and they're shooting each other. But also when the mission starts, when the server starts, they're going to take off from the ground, so you'll have this basically experience from the user end of stuff that going around you'll be able to feel it and to see it as well as they're gonna get shot down for example if an AWACS or his escort gonna get shot down his backup will take off from one of the airfields and also the enemy from both sides are in actively engaging enemy airfields uh with artillery and missiles and stuff like that so you got all this stuff in the background happening i made it as dynamic as possible uh without heavy scripting so it will not claim too much from the uh, user PC. So everyone can join, even with a basic PC. You don't need a high-end PC to join the server and have it run smoothly. But there is two more factors that make it really dynamic. One of them is the reason that I don't care to show you all the ground unit location, because you don't see all of them. I got a bunch of admins in my server that are helping me out controlling it. And there's a bunch of flags that will be activated by the admin decision. They just need to hit a keybind, and all of a sudden you'll see something's going on and it's something big it's going to be a full-on strike mission coming into strike it can be a stealth bomber coming into strike it can be a huge seed mission and you're going to have to take part of that as an escort as a support role or even the one taking it down or whatever it depends on obviously which side you're on and which flag has been activated the other factor that's going to make it really dynamic is you guys if you're going to join the server a human participant in this environment going to make it truly dynamic because the human decision making of what it is that you're trying to do will make it really unexpected to the other end to the blue side or the red side which team have you selected to participate in and also the way that you're going to carry out your mission so without further ado let's try a mission so the mission that I'm going to do today is to strike this possible scud site and if you hold left alt and uh the mouse click button basically the right click you're gonna have this which is perfect so now i can just head into my cockpit and put the steer points in the loadout that i selected to this mission is the two cbu 97 the green bombs on my wings and if you wonder why i have the harms it's because i'm gonna escort a b1 lancer strike incoming strike just to open the way for them a little bit because there is sam site on their route so I'll just wait here for the B1 lancers to start rolling. Here they are. This is the number one. Wow, this is impressive looking jet. Whoa, it's a huge jet. And we have uh, three more, so four in total. I'm going to follow after the number four and take off with him. And this is number four, and I'm gonna follow right after him, so I can start rolling. Well, look at this, they almost take all the taxi here. <laughs> so big. Impressive looking jets, really. So those B1 Lancers are admin control activated missions. So if they just want, they can activate it at any time that they want. And they'll do this according to whatever develops in the mission, you know. They have a different strike mission than what I have. They're going to fly to the same location. Well, basically to the same location that I'm flying. At least in the first leg of the flight. And then they're going to strike somewhere deep behind enemy lines. And a little bit further to the east. That's why I'm escorting them for the first leg of the flight. 
So what I'm trying to tell you guys is how alive the mission is. I'm the currently the only player in the server. So, you know, um, the user experience was my main focus when I made this mission. And to fly with B1 Lancers formation off them and stuff like that. I don't know. I think it's kind of impressive as far as a go-to user experience just to get to do those kind of stuff. Even if you're alone. And if you think about other play players joining in and taking the red team, for example, because now I'm in the blue team, that will be very interesting uh, variable to the equation of actually be able to carry out missions for the AI as well for the B1 Lancers they're gonna have another challenge other than the SAM sites they're starting to take off that's the number one taking off and I can hear the afterburner and if there will be, at some point in the future, a feel to DCS, I would feel the ground shaking right now. The noise is impressive, really. It's, you're probably gonna hear it once I'm gonna be even closer to that number four that I'm following right now. You're getting even closer, you can hear the number three taking off right now. No, it's the number two. So we're gonna be even closer than that. This is just impressive. Four afterburners kicking in like this. Number one is already airborne. Here we go. Number three is rolling. Can you hear that? Ooh. Wow. I never I never did that in DCS, being that close to a, a B1 Lancer in takeoff. I'm thinking about doing a formation takeoff with him, but he takes way too much of the runway. And I'll be faster on the takeoff, even though I'm a little bit heavy. I'll take off right behind him, but I don't want to be in a four afterburner jet wash. Here we go. Whoa. Such a powerful thing. And beautiful looking. This blue afterburner is something else. The flankers have that. Okay, here we go. Rotate very close to the B1 here. Gear up. I want to be really close to him, so I'm slowing down right after takeoff, which is not a healthy thing to do. But I want to be close to him. Look at that. Ooh. Impressive looking jet. I'm going to wait for him to uh, turn and then I'm going to form up on him. Wow. I don't envy any people that live next to airport that have B1 Lancers. I mean, can you imagine that thing at that altitude above your house? Oh. Now this is just impressive to fly next to that thing. It's a huge jet. Really impressive looking, interesting looking jet. This is just fun. Look at that. So they're in trail formation, gradually climbing. So they're not gonna fly low. By the way, the B1 Lancer, if I remember correctly, actually made to fly low to strike targets fly low and fast not high like the uh, older generation bombers I mean he can do that for sure but he, he was made to fly low and fast if I remember correctly uh, the manufacturing of that thing and it's really impressive so they do have the option to maneuver uh, around the valleys here to strike uh, deep targets deep behind enemy lines but it doesn't look like they're doing so it looks like they are climbing gradually in a big trail formation so that's why I'm here. And I think the first obstacle in their path is this SA-6 site. So I'm gonna get ready here with air to ground. I'm gonna switch to the harms. Actually, while I'm here, I'm gonna put it on pair because I'm, I'm gonna drop those at singles. At a uh, pair, sorry. Power on that thing. The harm is ready. 
I might even need to pass that guy. So I'm going to climb above them, both to uh, spearhead their approach, their, well, route, I guess, a little bit, because I'm not going to stick here for long. And I already have the SA-6 right here. Let me just make sure it's somewhat in the right location. So I'm going to work with the HSD page. Yeah, looks about right. We also have friendly SAMs that we can see here. I'm going to lock that thing. There you go, and we'll wait for uh, a better PGM here. PGM 2 will be enough. So let's climb and turn a little bit to triangulate the location of that SAM site. We are getting spiked. This is by an SA-5. This is because my altitude. So he's further away. I'm still gonna have to engage this SA-6. We're crossing the border right about now. We're down to PGM-4. We're gonna fly to the other side now to triangulate that location a little bit better. If I'm gonna get shot by this uh, SA-5, I think... There we go. I think I have time. I think. I don't wanna go lower than that. I still wanna see this SA-6. So I'm gonna stay here just for a while. Till I can better triangulate that thing. SA-5 is a very long-range missile, and fast. Uh, but once I'm gonna break the lock, even for- you know what? I can actually notch it. I wonder if the- if I'll still be able to see the SA-6. Yeah, broke the lock on the SA-6. That's what I was worried about. That looks like this SA-6 right here. Because we do have a few of them. Got him locked. Let's try to notch this SA-5. Oh, we got PGM-2. Okay, let's shoot and defend. Magnum. Broke the lock in the SA-5 and he shot another missile. Which is okay. It's gonna be easier to defeat, especially here around the mountains. There we go. We don't have a missile out on us anymore. Those the B-1s... Uh, the B-1 still pushing into the target location. I think I should save... Oh! They got a missile out. They shot a missile out at them. Well, I definitely hope the harm will do its thing. I'm unable to see it now. I think I should shoot at another target here. Oh no, we lost one of them. They managed to send a missile downrange before the harm got there. And the, S the SAM site is still active. Should I send another Magnum or should I send it to another location? I don't see smoke trails. I heard those the sonic booms. You hear that? Multiple sonic booms. That's impressive, man. If I'll see another smoke trail, I'll take a shot. But it looks like I took it down. Oh, sh yeah, that's another missile. Magnum. And I'm very close to the same site location. Oh, no. I'm failing in this mission. That's the same location. Oh! I see smoke. Did I got it? I see smoke from the target location. And we also have 29 nails. Well, I see smoke from that location. I hope I got it. And I don't see SA-6 anymore on the RWR. Are you guys okay? We got another splash. Oh, man. I'm a lot of fuel in the fuel tank. So he's jettisoned. Now let's go back to the target location. I do have some valleys to use here. Which is good, because I'm constantly getting locked by this uh, SA-5 and another SA-6 uh, not that far away. We're not that far from the target.
I'm constantly getting locked by this SA5. Even though I'm using terrain, it's uh, not that far away from here, I think. It's getting a little bit dangerous. Those missiles is, well, are fast, so I'm going to try to avoid that. We do have some terrain to use, which is good, but I'm trying to gain somewhat of an altitude to get an understanding of the target location, what it is that we're dealing with, because I have only two bombs of the uh, CBU-97, and I would like to have them as effective as possible. I'm climbing a little bit just to see the target. It's behind that ridge line right here. Still don't have it in sight. That's a missile out. It's an SA-5. I'm somewhere around there. No hit signatures yet. It's right behind this valley right there. Uh, ridge line. Oh, I do have some heat signatures there. Oh, I, I can actually see them raising the missiles and shooting them. All right, let's defend. <laughs> so we missed that opportunity. They're already shooting the missiles. Let's defend. I'll climb back up to uh, better designate the target to have an understanding of what it is that I'm dealing with because, because the CBUs have those bomblets and you want to cover as much area as possible. So you do need the right approach for that. Look at that. Okay, that looks like... Let's zoom out. That looks exactly like the middle, actually. So I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna designate that location right here. That's right about there. Okay, let's defend and approach it again. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use CCIP. So it's basically... Where, well, I think it's more accurate, but I'm doing that because I'm... Uh, you need to defend here. I'm doing that because there is wind, and the bomblets are parachuting on the target, so switch to CCIP. We do have the target location in sight. What I'm gonna do is basically a hold off with the jet itself. I'm, I'm gonna see where the wind is blowing from where it is that I'm uh, gonna approach. I'm gonna approach from the left to right, just because how that target was laid up. You can see the smoke trails right there, so I'm gonna try to cover as much area as possible. We're safe now. We defeated those missiles. I'm gonna drop, drop it from a little bit higher altitude, and I, I will get shot at by those SEM sites. Don't have a lot of fuel to spare. Got the target in sight. Let's roll in. Here we go. That looks like a good approach, and I will gonna have to do a hold off because of the wind, and the wind is blowing to my right. Let's check out. There it is. Try to have a nice approach here. That looks like about right. I'm gonna speed up a little bit, dump the nose. And I'm gonna drop it right around here. To the left of the target, right around there. Here we go. Bombs away. I hope that we'll cover most of it. I guess we'll see. Sometimes it's a, a little bit of a guesstimate, especially with this wind. I'm getting low on fuel here. Hope that will be a good effect on target and I will not get shot at. Come on, do something nice. Getting spiked again. There we go. Wow. Wow. Very good hits. I'm happy with that. Ooh. So we did uh, had a good guesstimate with a with a wind there. Uh, one of the bombs was a little bit off. I should have it a little bit further away. That's okay. I would say what 70%. Actually, the launchers. I don't know how many of them left. I thought I saw four or five. Oh, look at that. We got bandits here. Constantly getting spiked by this uh, SAM site. Let's defend. We have bandits coming in. This is AI. I'm alone in the server. So this is AI. Uh, I wonder. Let's switch to air to air. And we can have, with the TGP by the way, we can have a VID. So I'm gonna ping them on Daylink. They're not that far, and 15,000 feet. Got them spiked on uh, Daylink. Look at that, they're not that far. And let's switch to the TGP. Right here. TGP. And radar. Let's lock that target and see what it is. Got it locked. Let's switch to the TGP, see what we're dealing with. Looks like they're behind the clouds. So I'll climb. We do have SEM sites here. It's 
especially in, for where I'm going. Look at that. What do we have here? That's the enemy tanker. Okay, let's take it out. Why not? That'll be fine. He's escorted, by the way. So let me um, have exactly three BVR missiles, three AIM-120. So he should be escorted by two of them. Let's see how much we can capture here in radar. I'm, I'm going to engage and go home afterwards. I'm not I'm not going to stick around to see if I, I'll be able to splash out of them. It's not a risk that I'm willing to take. I don't have not neither the fuel or the ammunition to engage all of them. Okay, we got two of them spiked. This is the main target. This is one of the escorts. As you can see, I might be able to switch here for a better view. Oh, there we go. That's a better view. White hot. Switch again. Okay. Who should we engage first? The tanker? Okay, let's engage the tanker. He is 21 miles. Let's climb up. We're really low on fuel. Getting low on fuel. 4,000 pounds of fuel. I got only one escort, by the way. I don't see the other. He might, he might be escorted by only one. I don't know. Let's engage him. Start with the tanker. With uh, TGP, we'll be able to see if we're getting a good uh, effect on target. We can zoom out a little bit just to get a better understanding. Oh, you can see the escort flying right next to him. That's a nice picture that we have here. All right, here we go. Fox 3, 14 miles. Switch target to the escort. Fox 3, at f again, 14 miles. Let's defend, and I'm getting spiked. I'm going to try to keep the lock. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Into the crank we go. I hope the TGP will see him. Let's take a look at the tanker first. Oh, we, uh, three. Three bandits. Tally on, the, on another. Okay, the tanker is splashed. I'm unable to switch to the other. I saw another bandit right around here. Lock him, lock him, lock him. Not that one. Got him. Fox 3. Offset. And let's defend. He's chasing me. I'm down to Fox 2's. Oh, splash. Got him. Let's run away. There is another, there is another escort, I'm pretty sure. I saw another dot. Uh, looks like he was defending already. Because he was fairly low. So we got one escort, and we got the tanker. The tanker is... Looks like he's in an emergency. So let's pick him off with a Fox 2 and be done with it. I, I don't want to recommit. I'm not sure about this recommitting here. <laughs> I'm really not sure. Got tone. Two miles, Fox 2. That's it. I got nothing now. He is dropping flares, so he was damaged. You know what? We're here, so... That missed? Let's do a gun run. There we go. Another engine on fire. <laughs> yeah, he's going down. Okay, parachutes. Yeah, he's going down. Okay, that's enough. I'm pretty sure there was another, another escort. I don't want to stick around. I got nothing. You see? A dot right there? I don't know if that is an ejecting pilot or an escort, but I'm not going to take my chances. So, okay, we're done. We're done. That's it. Overall successful mission, I would say, no? No. <laughs>